Presidents since the 1970s have been saying we need to depend less on foreign fuels. And so that problem's been around. The question has been how do you do it? The way that we started focusing on what became LS9 was we said, well, things are happening in the energy space. People are making ethanol, people are looking at how to make replacement fuels. Uh, replacement transportation fuels and replacement sources of energy more broadly. You look at something like ethanol, which is going to require people to purchase new equipment, it's going to require new distribution channels, and we say, in an ideal world, what would you like to be able to do? Hydrocarbon-based fuels, i.e. something that looks like, smells like, and acts like petroleum, because we have an existing pipeline that very efficiently transports petroleum across the country as is. In addition to that, our transportation vehicles use it today. We came up with this broad market assessment of what a need was and then tried to figure out how can you do this. Taking organisms and enhancing them in a combination of rational and empirical ways to actually accomplish producing fuels or producing chemicals, i.e. hydrocarbons. The goal of LS9 is really to make a chassis, if you will, that you can adapt to make any sort of hydrocarbon product you'd want. Taking existing organisms, knock in the right genes, knock out distracting genes that aren't going to enable the productivity to the, to the level that we'd like, and then putting in the feedstock you want and getting hydrocarbons. What we've been learning is things like knockouts aren't quite as simple as just taking out that one gene, because just by taking out that one gene, you actually get a compensatory set of signals that occur around the cell at that time. So thinking about cellular biology as opposed to just classic molecular biology. Ultimately, the things that we're going to want to make sure of is that our reactor has the species in it that we've put there, i.e. it's not getting infected with some other organism, which will reduce our net efficacy, that we're not getting mutations in the organism that are changing the product that we're producing, that our growth rates are what we expect them to be, Ideally, you'd like to tie this to a cellulosic or similar source of biological input, if you will. Something like a miscanthus, uh, a switchgrass. What happens with these plants is they take up CO2 from the atmosphere. So as they're growing, they're basically carbon negative. Then as you harvest it, you're obviously using gas in the vehicles or some other carbon source, so you're going to be putting a little bit of carbon back into the atmosphere for that. Then you ultimately convert this into your fuel. The advantage of what we're doing as opposed to some other approaches is we're very energy efficient. The approach we're taking is the most energy efficient approach, at least that we know of. If you look at what a barrel of crude is used for today, it makes such a wealth of products that we probably don't even think about on a day-to-day -day basis. Things like plastics, things like transportation fuels, even compact discs are all related to what we dig out of the ground as, as crude oil and refine to make these products. The goal of LS9 is ultimately to be able to make, in a controlled and precise way, the hydrocarbon-based products that you would want for these variety of markets. If you can use a biological platform uh, to make any of these products, whether it be plastic, whether it be fuel, etc., Ultimately, it's all important because that provides a domestic, if we're doing it here, source of these petroleum products. And that's really one of the fundamental goals, is reducing that dependence on foreign oil and providing also a biological source that's net reducing the pollution that you can see. We didn't know ahead of time that we would come up with a solution that would be one, executable, two, rational, um, and three, meaningful. But the problems you want to solve are the big problems. And while they may be the hardest problems to solve, what you really want to do if you have a meaningful impact is focus your efforts in on some of these big problems and really try and come up with solutions. So it's almost that way of saying, assume that there is no limit in terms of what you can execute. What can we do?